Hi, my name is Pamela Coons, Associate Professor of Medicine in the Division of Oncology at Yale School of Medicine and Yale Cancer Center. I'm excited to announce ASCO's new open access journal, JCO Oncology Advances. As the inaugural editor-in-chief, I hope to support JCO Oncology Advances to become the premier platform to bridge the gap between accessible scientific research and clinical care. Stay tuned for more information, including new article types, at ascopubs.org forward slash JCO Oncology Advances. We look forward to seeing your submissions in spring of 2024. This JCO podcast provides observations and commentary on the JCO article, Radio Frequency Ablation with or without Transcatheter Arterial Chemobilization in the Treatment of Hepatocellular Carcinoma a prospective randomized trial by Peng et al. My name is Rebecca Mixad, and I'm an attending physician at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center and an assistant professor at Harvard Medical School in Boston, Massachusetts. My oncologic specialty is gastrointestinal malignancies. The optimal treatment and the optimal treatment sequencing for hepatocellular carcinoma, HCC, depends on a complex constellation of factors. For patients with HCC awaiting liver transplant who need symptom palliation or who are not surgical candidates for disease limited to the liver, liver-directed therapy may offer tumor control. Among several different liver-directed therapy approaches, transarterial chemoembolization, called TACE, and radiofrequency ablation, called RFA, are most commonly used worldwide. However, the efficacy of TACE and RFA remains limited. Even for the highly selected patients in Levette's 2003 meta-analysis, TACE provided a two-year survival benefit but only gave an objective response in a third of patients. In addition, RFA is generally performed only for smaller HCC tumors due to inadequate tumor necrosis observed in tumors larger than about 3 centimeters. Given limited alternative effective therapies, and the appeal of avoiding systemic toxicities for localized disease, improvement of liver-directed treatment, including combination approaches, is a priority for the field of HCC multidisciplinary treatment. From a theoretical perspective, the strengths of TACE and RFA directly complement each other. For RFA, the tumor size limitation appears linked, in part, to the highly vascular nature of HCC whose tumor blood flow may act as a heat sink. In contrast, TACE takes advantage of tumor vascularity to deliver chemotherapy to the HCC tumor and then block tumor blood flow for additional anti-tumor effect. Therefore, for many years, the combination of TACE and RFA has appeared to be a logical next step for improving liver-directed therapy. Support for TACE-RFA combination therapy initially flourished with a 2008 publication in another journal that reported a significant response rate and survival benefit for combination TACE-RFA therapy compared to RFA or TACE alone. Unfortunately, concerns were quickly raised about the results of that study, and that paper was eventually retracted in 2009. Despite this setback, research efforts continued based on the theoretical benefits and the results of several smaller studies that favored the TACE-RFA combination. Several additional studies have been published in the intervening years, and this podcast discusses the long-term survival data for the largest prospective randomized study of TACE-RFA combination therapy for HCC. The primary outcome of the study by Peng et al. discussed in this podcast is overall survival for patients randomized to either TACE followed by RFA or RFA alone. From October 2006 to June 2009, the study recruited untreated patients with a single HCC tumor less than 7 centimeters in size or three HCC tumors each less than 3 centimeters in size. Patients were stratified by tumor size greater or less than 3 centimeters prior to central randomization. Consistent with current clinical practice, 
pathologic confirmation of HCC was not required as long as imaging criteria were met. The study followed the European Association for the Study of Liver Disease HCC Diagnostic Guidelines. Patients were also required to meet standard feasibility and safety criteria for both TACE and RFA, which includes no radiologic evidence of tumor invasion of major portal and hepatic venous branches and an acceptable ultrasound-guided percutaneous path to the tumor. Although patients with both child's PU class A or B cirrhosis were allowed, exclusion criteria specifically excluded those patients with severe hematologic consequences of cirrhosis and those with evidence of hepatic decompensation. The TACE and RFA procedures were standardized for all patients, and the trial was conducted as at a single center in China with a single team of physicians performing both TACE and RFA. TACE was accomplished with a mixture of carboplatin, abirubicin, mitomycin C, and lipiodol, followed by absorbital gelatin sponge particles for embolization. A single application of RFA was used for tumors less than 3 centimeters in size. For larger tumors, up to three RFA applications were performed in a single session. For patients with multiple tumors, all tumors were treated in a single TACE or RFA session. For patients receiving combination therapy, RFA was performed within two weeks of TACE. All patients underwent dynamic enhanced computer tomography, CT, four weeks after RFA in order to determine radiologic treatment success. For the TACE-RFA combination group, incomplete treatment was defined as enhancement near the lipidol area, and for the RFA group, any enhancement near the treated nodule. Additional RFA was performed if there is radiologic evidence of incomplete treatment. If additional RFA did not produce radiologic evidence of complete treatment, TACE was recommended. Patients were followed with ultrasound every three months for two years, every six months from year two to five, and yearly thereafter. Recurrences were treated at the physician's discretion. Study enrollment is notable for difficulty recruiting patients. Out of 2,256 patients with HCC evaluated at the institution during the three-year study period, 71% were not eligible. The majority of ineligible patients had a greater tumor burden than specified by the protocol. A potentially eligible patient, 70%, refused to participate. Thus, the 189 randomized patients represent just 8% of the overall HCC population seen at the institution and represent a very select patient population. The two treatment groups were well randomized and, as expected for the HCC population in China, patients were largely hepatitis B positive and were child's PU class A. At the first post-RFA imaging, radiologic evidence of treatment success was seen in 97% in the TACE-RFA combination group and 93% of the RFA alone group. One additional RFA treatment session for those without evidence of complete treatment success increased radiologic success to 195% respectively. With a medium follow-up of 36 months, more patients developed recurrence in the RFA alone group, although this did not meet statistical significance. The majority of recurrences in both arms were distant intrahepatic rather than extrahepatic. Recurrences were primarily treated with RFA, 67%, in the TACE-RFA combination group, and with TACE, 46%, in the RFA alone group. There were no treatment-related deaths and treatment complications were similar to previous reports. The primary endpoint, overall survival, was met with a statistically significant hazard ratio of 0.525, favoring the TACE-RFA combination group. The Cox proportional hazard model was stratified by tumor size and number. The one-year overall survival was 92.6%, versus 85.3% for TACE-RFA combination 
versus RFA alone. This difference was sustained for four-year overall survival, 61.8% versus 45% respectively. The better-than-expected efficacy for RFA alone, which may be due to the size distribution of tumors in recruited patients, actually led to an increase in the study sample size by more than 50% at the first protocol-specified annual review. Multivariate analysis identified treatment allocation, tumor size, and treatment number to be significant predictors of overall survival. Results for recurrence-free survival were similar to the overall survival findings. The primary cause of death in each group was tumor progression. Although not statistically significant, there were more deaths due to liver failure in patients with stable tumor for the TACE-RFA combination group. The success of the primary overall survival endpoint must be considered in the context of the limitations of the study. Although tumors up to 7 centimeters and multiple tumors were allowed, over half of the patients had tumors less than 3 centimeters in size, and a majority of patients had a single tumor. In addition, the severity of underlying liver disease in the vast majority of patients was child's PUA. Thus, the study results may be difficult to generalize, even to the full patient population potentially eligible for the study. As with many HCC studies, generalizability of this single-center Asian study may be limited for Western populations where hepatitis C and alcohol are the primary risk factors for HCC. Despite these limitations, the significant overall survival results offer proof-of-concept evidence supporting the superiority of combination TACE-RFA over RFA alone for selected patients. In light of the prior controversy surrounding combination TACE-RFA treatment, the randomized trial by Peng et al. adds credibility to the combination liver-directed treatment. However, the true value of this approach may be borne out in future studies that successfully recruit patients with larger HCC tumors for whom treatment options are currently very limited. In addition, alternative approaches for decreasing tumor blood flow may expand RFA combination therapy to those patients who are not eligible for TACE. Given the etiology of HCC, liver-directed treatment choices will always be complicated by the severity of the underlying liver disease the extent of tumor burden, the presence of portal vein thrombosis, performance status, and patient comorbidities. Most patients with HCC require multiple treatment approaches throughout their treatment course, and the nuances of each case, especially regarding treatment selection and sequencing, merit multidisciplinary evaluation and care. This concludes this JCO podcast. Thank you for listening. For more original research, editorials, and review articles, please visit us online at jco.org. This production is copyrighted to the American Society of Clinical Oncology. Thank you for listening.